Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. The Dark Knight movie thoughts. So, the Joker's plans and all, I do think, think that they're a little... There, there, there are some things that doesn't seem like he could have really, you know, done in the amount of time and sort of, you know, how, how, how did he figure out where they were going to turn as they were driving Harvey Dent, you know, and the, and, and did he figure out that he would be captured and they figured out, you know, the, the police figure out how to catch him, so they must have figured out his plan, and then he's figured out that he'd be captured, so he, you know, hooked up the cell phone explosive in the stomach of that other guy, and he's just, and how did he get out of the, oh wait, what, was he still in the handcuffs at that point? Anyway, he, you know, that, that cop, he, he, he keeps provoking, and he, you know, uh, yeah, he, he gets away from, w without us seeing exactly how. We also don't see what happens at the party, but with Dent gone, I suspect he and his goons pretty much just left, because that was who he was after. I don't know. I, I guess maybe he, you know, killed everyone in the room and then left. I don't know. It was a little bit of an awkward cut, how, you know, Batman, after saving Rachel by having her land on a car. Wait, how'd that work? The... Sonar, <laughs> I don't believe it. I, I just don't quite see how he could make that kind of thing. The, the first time he uses it, sure, no problem. But that he suddenly has sonar on every single cell phone in Gotham City, you know, these millions of people, no. How, 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 no, no. To quote the, you know, the, the guy who runs the... Country Western Barn Blues Brothers. No, no. I do like that they, you know, have him only use it that one time, and that sort of, you know, I guess he figured that Lucius would be against it, so he, you know, said, or or maybe he just installed it just in case. And if Lucius had been like, then he wouldn't have told him to enter his name out. But yeah, I do think that raises, you know, raises the issue. Is it okay to, you know, actually I think Young Turk mentioned it just in, just today in a story. Illegal wiretapping, I, I think they called it. You know, is, is that okay? To catch someone like the Joker, to catch a terrorist. You know, and if you only use it that one time, and you're sure that it will catch this one guy, you know. Yeah, I, I think it's 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 interesting, and I don't know. I you know sometimes we maybe do have to take that really you know tough decision and do something that's not popular, and that you wouldn't do if you weren't facing someone like the Joker. I really like the, the 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 sacrifice of Batman with you know that he he agrees. In fact, he he suggests that he will take Dent's crimes upon himself. That you know it will you know they they need to keep believing in Dent. He needs to be a martyr. He he can't be. A villain, he, you know, it, it is a great line to of his of, you know, you you either die a hero or live long enough to become the villain, and I really like that that was not 
something he just says, but it's a response. It's, you know, I, I think that this one maybe does a bit better at not just having people spout philosophical leanings, but, you know, when he says that line, you know, you hear it in the tr all the trailers, and it's like, you know, it's a really obvious line to have. It's a great line, don't get me wrong, but it's, you know, it's one of those lines that really say something, so it's great for, it's, it's a good sound bite. But when you see the movie, he's not just saying that. He, you know, he's like, fine, you know what, you're right, this is how it really is. It's, you know, he's, he's admitting that everyone can become a villain if, you know, and, and you know, to, to an extent that's what the film is about, you know, the sort of theme of it. Now, the, the, ah, crap, I completely lost my train of thought. Maybe it will arrive at the right station at some point during this video. Instead, I will talk more about this theme. You know, where the first one was just fear, 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 fear. This one, you know, they go into this really scary thought of the Joker, of, you know, which, which is, which is something Alan Moore has explored in some of his writing. And if you're reading comics and you haven't read Alan Moore, then that's a terrible mistake that you need to go correct right now. Pause the video, go read Alan Moore now. And yes, the, the, the thought of can anyone become a monster if something sufficiently bad happens to them, if they are scared enough, will they become as ugly as the Joker? And, you know, the, the way that they have this explored with the, the two boats, you know, I, it just, it really is very smart how the Joker makes that happen with, you know, making people think that there's something wrong with the tunnels and the bridges. And thus, well, how else do you get out of Gotham? By boat. And so, you know, because it's a port city, uh, I, actually, I'm not sure that's actually established in these movies, but, you know, I, I'm pretty sure that's a fairly, you know, that's something known in the comics, I, as I recall. Anyway, and he's planted, you know, bombs on these boats. The same way he planted bombs on the hospital. Not entirely sure how he had time to secretly plant all of these explosives. Anyway, you know, he gets the people onto. Maybe it's slightly convoluted that he actually manages to get all the people on these two boats. But anyway, and yeah, the detonator to the bomb on the other boat is on each boat, and you have these innocent people arguing over. Yeah, the innocent people on one boat and the criminals on the other, and the innocent people are arguing, but they're criminals. Sooner or later, they will kill us. And it, it is that rationalizing, you know, that will you kill someone else in, in the hope that then they can't kill you? You know, in, or in the fear that you, there's that word again, in the fear that Otherwise, they'll kill you, you know, and the criminals, you know, that several of them are tempted, you know, because if one is cynical enough, one might say that as a criminal, you know, at least several of them have already made the choice of sacrificing someone else's life for their own. You know, if, if they're a killer, then they did kill someone else in order to themselves survive, you know. And, or, you know, that, that, that might be the case. They might have killed for some other reason, but yeah, you know, that's... It's, it's an argument to be made, and 
yeah, I, I really like how the scene plays out. I think it's, it is a compelling question to ask. And it's basically, it's one of the only times in the entire movie that it lets up just a tiny bit. Because the people on these boats don't die. And the, the you know the, the innocents don't become murderers, and the, the the killers aren't the ones to survive by killing others, you know. I don't know exactly how I feel about what's his name, Tiny Lister Jr. So, something like that, uh, you know, the, the the president from the Fifth Element. Man, he really sunk low, didn't he? <sighs> Anyway, the, yeah, him, him taking the thing, you know, I mean, he has the line, you think, oh, he's gonna blow up, you know, I'm gonna do the thing you should have done ten minutes ago, and he chucks it out the window. You know, would have, would have been really bad if he had been, like, a, you know, bad at tossing stuff, and it hit the wall, and, like, you know, pressed the button, and went, no, I didn't mean that, or, or yeah, I don't know, then, then again, he's black, so he's probably a good basketball player. That was racial profiling. I'm terribly sorry. And but but yes, I I I don't know, corny maybe a little. I don't know. I I can appreciate what Nolan is doing by you know saying just because you're a criminal doesn't mean you're bad. I don't know. I I do. Yeah. I like I said. I'm not sure. I'm entirely sure how I feel about it. I like, I guess, that even on the immediate threat of death, the Joker is just laughing or or defiant or accept like you know there at the end he gets thrown out and he's just he's laughing and you know he doesn't know that the Batman's going to save. Him. Well, I guess at first he's laughing because he thinks that he just won. He thinks that this means that the Batman has broken his one rule and killed, you know, but... And, and he actually wants him to ram him with the, the bat pod, which, again, you know, he's... You know, it's not often you see someone playing chicken against someone who is in a vehicle when the person is not themselves in a vehicle. That's... Man. Anyway, you know, yeah, I guess... He wants him to, you know, even if he has to die, he wants to break Batman. He wants to make Batman a killer like himself, you know. And, and the stories that the Joker tells of, you know, how, how he got the scars, they just become increasingly... I nearly cried. I, I'm not kidding. It just... Especially for that second one with the wife. Man, that is horrible. Nolan, you are a sick, twist puppy. You know that, right? Man. Or, or was it Goyer who thought of that one? It, it actually, it sounds like a Miller one, but again, I know Miller didn't write this. I guess Moore could have come up with it as well. But he didn't write this either. He's not going to write a movie anytime soon. Anyway... The I really love how, what they did with Two Face. I think that it was basically perfect. You know, I I I don't think it would have worked as a main villain for an entire movie. And you know, some people on the internet brought up that you know why doesn't he die from all this? You know, all these burn scars. Well, he is only seen as alive for a few hours after that happens. You know, if he, if he had gone on a longer crime spree, yes, he would have died of dehydration. Probably, you know, Nolan only kept him alive for a few hours. That probably could happen, you know. I don't really like the, the effects on it. Man, he is horrifying, you know. Real nightmare fuel. But, yeah, the... You know, basically, he comes back, and I like how the, the name comes up as well, you know, the Two-Face, Harvey Two-Face, you know, that, you know, the, the, the internal affairs name, you know, and he, 
Yeah, yeah, just the, the, the thing of he wants to... You know, some of what he does is actually... He's, he's not entirely... Well, what he does is wrong, but sort of his reasoning for some of it isn't entirely wrong. He, he's right about Gordon. You trusted the people that I told you not to trust. You know, was it Ramirez and Wirtz or something like that? You know, these two guys that he had investigated, and yeah, they were they were bad. And now Rachel is dead because of it. You know, it just it is this thing of the the nice man, the uh, nice man, yeah, the the. The man who tries to be a decent human being, the man who insists on doing the right thing, so only cracking because life isn't fair. It just isn't, and he wants to bring some fairness into it. And you can, you, you know, I say in the review, the Joker, you really can't quite understand. I mean, you can maybe understand that he wants others to be as ugly as he is. You know, figuratively speaking, not physically. Man, the story with the wife, she leaves. She can't stand the sight of me. Sorry. Anyway, you know, you, you basically can't understand the Joker, but Two-Face, you, you truly can't understand. He's, he's the kind of tragic villain. He, he wasn't supposed to be a bad guy. He wasn't, he wasn't meant to go and kill people because he's, he's so just. He's... He's a good person, you know, but suddenly it just becomes too much. He loses too much in too short of uh, a span of time, and it pushes him over the edge. And, and yeah, you know, him trying to force Gordon to tell his son that it'll be okay and before he shoots him, and just, you can kind of understand. And, and the thing with the coin... I'm going to give him as much of a chance as Rachel did. 50-50. It's just, it's a punch to the gut because he's not wrong. You know, the, the, there were two people to save and they only, yeah. And the, the thing about the, you know, I, I do think the thing with the driver, I don't know, it's kind of clever but did he expect to get out of that car? How did he get out of that car himself? I, he, he's like taking off his seatbelt right before he doesn't, but he doesn't jump out of the car before he shoots. You know, so it's just kind of... And, and he had more revenge to exact. You know, so yeah. But but yeah, and, and with Gordon, you can also understand his decision. He, you know, he, he literally says, if I didn't work with people you had investigated, I'd be working alone. So that's also part of what he, you know, and, and we know that from the first movie. He is willing to work with the bad guys, or the, the corrupt cops at least, because he, he needs to be doing something, and he can't do it alone. He, you know, he will take the, the bad apple if that's just the only one that there is to get a hold of. You know, and, and, and yeah, then sometimes bad things happen because of that. You know, when, when you do something, when you act out of desperation, you might do something horribly wrong. And, yeah, it leads to, and, and just the, the, the communication between Rachel and, and, you know, with, with her saying my answer is yes, and then Batman comes in, and Dent is screaming no, and it's, and, and she misunderstands, so she dies thinking that that is just Nolan, sick puppy, bad dog, or well, good dog, but yeah, anyway, I really like the mannerisms of the Joker, the, 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 the tongue, and just the, the erratic movement, and just, he, he really is just, you know, you, you can't pin him down. It's just really, and it's quite clever also how he, he disguises the hostages as 
excuse me, goons, and the goons as hostages, excuse me, and, you know, Batman goes and takes out the SWAT team instead of running ahead of them and taking out the goons. Well, I guess if he hadn't taken out the SWAT team, they would have shot the hostages. And, and again, you know, that makes, then they'd have that on their conscience, you know, then they'd be killers, basically. And, yeah, you know, you can really understand, yeah, the, the, the joke is just horrible. And I, I quite like the, the opening bank heist as well, with, you know, each of them kills the other one right after they've done their entire job. And at the end of it, no one's left but the Joker, you know. And that he torches, you know, he, he has this huge pile of, of all the money, you know, all the mobster's money and all his own money. And it's like, you know, oh, I'm only, I'm only burning my half. You know, and, and the Lau, he was on top of the money. Joker lights the pile of money. He's still up there. We didn't see him, anyone bring him down. So, yeah, I guess he's gonna burn up there. You know, once the fire reaches him, which, yeah. The... I like how the film sort of... You know, it gives you a few early... What's it called? Successes for... For Batman. You know, he, he gets Lau. He gets Lau back to Gotham. You know, and he really seems to have something of the monster, you know, the thing of, you know, trying, what was it, 594 criminals at once, and like, oh, oh, sure, the bosses will make bail, and, you know, what was it, do plea bargain, whatever. Yeah, I think you know what I'm talking about. And, but, but the middle-level guys won't, you know, they'll stay in jail, and, you know, it'll, it'll be a lot off the streets, and, you know, after this, you know, the, the, what's it, the Chechen or something like that? The Chechen, that's what they call him, I think. He's like, we have to call the clown. And, yeah, you know, they, they, you know, Batman and Dent have been so aggressive against the criminals and so effective that they go to their own extreme, you know, it's escalation, like, yeah, they mentioned the first one, and they, they just didn't know what they were doing with the Joker. They didn't know that he would be so, you know. Although I suppose if he hadn't, you know, if he wasn't working for them, would they really have made much of a difference in the plot overall? I guess he could have basically done it without. Maybe he got their means. I don't know. Maybe I'm missing something. Could be. I'm not crazy about the sonar, the, the, when, when we see him use the sonar and you know, we, we see him running towards guys that he has to take out and all this stuff, it just kind of takes away, you know, again, it begins with so much about we fear the Batman ourselves and in this one we see what he's doing, you know, so it's, it's sort of the tension is will he make it and, you know, will it work out for him? You know, yeah, I, I just, I prefer Begins in that regard, I have to say. But the action is definitely good in this. Hmm, I suppose that more or less covers it. The sight of the Joker going, you know, that, that one shot, the, the one long shot of him going away from the hospital as it's blowing up behind and around him is really effective. And how it, it stops part of the way through. And like, we're surprised, the Joker's surprised, and he like smacks the, the detonator and then it blows up, you know, and he's like, okay. And suddenly he's in the bus and, you know, gets away. Just the, uh, yeah. I suppose that covers it. I've reviewed other parts of this series, the links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.